Welcome back, guys. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> welcome back. Um, anyone that's new, then welcome. 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 I'm, um, I'm just going to rough down some blocks here into bowl pot type shapes. Um, I'm rough turning them because there's so, I've got a lot of this U and this U is really cracking badly. It is a, such a shame. This one's got a big crack around here. It's got a big crack in the bottom. But what I'm finding is once I get them to this stage, they're not cracking anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm turning, I mean, this one, I've just rough turned it down to this, this part. I'm not finishing it. It's had no finishes. It's just had a bit of sand and sealer put on it. Um, if it stays all right, don't get no more cracks, then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to fill that with some sawdust. Uh, super glue, sawdust, fill it, and then I'll uh, take another pass over it and then finish it off and it should be all right. But I'm not going to waste my time doing that now. If I'm going to put it over there, it's going to crack later. So I'm just leaving them. And what I've got is I've got these ones, which I want to turn into little type, because as you know, I've got someone that's selling them for you. So I want to turn them into little bowl type pots. Um, I've got a few bits of this. So I'm going to be doing some more cowboy hats soon out of these as well. I did turn one this morning and then I went and thought, oh, that's nice and thin. That should bend all right. And it went snap because <laughs> it's not wet wood and it's dry wood. <laughs> I, snapped the, I snapped the ribbon. It was a lovely little hat and I snapped it. What, what, what an idiot. Yeah. But then anyway. You, <laughs> then uh, you, ca you came just, and showed me and then you snapped the other side. <laughs> I'm just rough turning some of these. And uh, yeah, showed Lisa and said, yeah, well, I went like that. And the other one went snap. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Um... Yeah, so I'd, I'm just videoing it because I thought, you know, some people might like to see. I'm just using a, a different arrangement of tools, you know, do some with traditional, some with carbide, whatever. So it pleases everyone. You know, if you're just roughing them down, it doesn't really matter what tools you use, does it? And Well, it doesn't matter what tools you use anyway if you're no. doing it in your own workshop. I'm just putting it between step centres, like so. Okay, I'm not rounding them on a bandsaw or that. I could, I don't I, know, this is the fun bit. Otherwise, it's just boring, isn't it? I'm only doing this for fun. I've just, so I ain't got time to turn them and finish them completely. And I know once I cut it like this to this stage, give it a, give it a few hours, I'll come out later and it'll have cracks, cracks coming down it again. So if I get them turned, roughly, it's a bit like turning wet, wet wood. But this ain't, this is bone dry. Um, it's a little bit like wet turning, you know, where you're just going to turn them to shape and hope they don't crack. Whatever, or move. Right, I'm just gonna put my coffee over there. Right, so I'm just mounting between centers, between step centers. It's nice and safe, it's nice and secure. And then right always, I mean this first one I'm probably gonna do a bit with the spindle gouge because I love doing it with a spindle gouge. Then I might do one with a carbide or something like that. You can do a bowl gouge, you can use... I'll, what I'll do is I'll probably take a few cuts with different tools. So if you're interested in it, you can see the different tools and the different way we approach it with different tools. And we'll do that. If you're not interested, then, well, then I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> right, so I'm going to spin it up. Now, as you all know, I turn quite fast anyway. So I'm just going to turn it on and stand over here and let that spin. Okay, because if you're going to do anything, it'll do it pretty much straight away. Right, just in case people into it, I'm turning it to two and a half thousand RPM. Okay, now I'm going to come in from this side because I don't want to stand right in the front of it like this to do any turning like that. So that's why right. learn to use your left hand. I can come in here, take a few little cuts like this, nice and gentle. Now that's just slipping a little bit, it's between step centres, so it won't come off, I won't get a catch, it'll just make it slow down. I just want to get it around, now see, now that, if you have it, on a chuck and things like that, that would have been a catch. For that, it just um, stopped. Right, so you need to go in a bit, that's all. Let's see how are we? We're not round yet. 
And when using the spindle gouge, you just close the flute, come in, get, get your angle so your bevel's going to be in contact, and just open it, and there you go, you pick up your cup. Right, that's round. Okay, so now gonna bring that in there. Okay, we'll take it down a bit. I don't want to do the foot of that on it. Put on the bottom, okay. Right, come in and drop. Now, don't come in here and just pull back because if you do that, you're going to take the edge off of that straight away, okay. If you want to scrape, just go there, drop the handle, drop the handle, you'll get a nice clean finish and you won't blunt the tool, right. That's it. Basically, that's just a rough sort of shape I'm doing on it. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little, a little shear cut just to clean it. That's it. I'm not finishing it, so that's that's all I need to do. Okay. There. And although it's rough turned, although it's rough turned, look, we've got no no torn grain. Okay. That's all nice and smooth, no sand in, nothing yet, okay? There's no torn grain or anything, because we just get our cuts right, get our bevel in contact. So there we go, that's one. Then I'm going to I'm gonna put them all on the chuck when I put a chuck on. Okay. I'm just going to get them to, to rough shape first, all right? Okay. Well, hang on, let me have a look, see what I want as a top. I'm going to go with that end as a top, because see, see how the grain's going like that on it. Okay, so I'm picking to have that, that as a top. Okay, so we're back in there. Right, we've done the spindle gouge. So if you're not into using your spindle gouges for doing bowls, then we can always do with a bowl gouge. So what bowl gouge are we going to choose? <laughs> choose a nice little short one, it's only a small piece. Yeah. Okay, just a half inch, half inch, well it's half inch, it's not actually, it's not half inch, I'm talking a load of crap there. It's um, it's five eighths, okay, or three quarter of an inch, or sixteen mil, if you want to do it that way. But it's a half inch flute, so it's called a half inch bowl gouge. I call it a three quarter inch bowl gouge. It doesn't really matter what you call it, as long as it does the job. <laughs> okay, so again, start up, step away. Don't stand in front of it because it's going to come off. It's going to go over there or normally it goes down there or whatever okay so again close the flute come in open and keep you want the bevel there that bit of bevel in touch with the wood okay so come in close the flute open the flute Thank <laughs> you. 
because I'm taking quite a heavy cut and it's square, it just slips, just tighten it up, everything's fine. Right, the smoother to run, so just bring that in. Get my foot. Take your time, follow that nice, that's it, there we go. A nice fish, nice and smooth, but it's not a finished cut. You can't get a finished cut riding the bevel like that, okay? You'll never get it. And there's, there's reasons for it, which we'll go into at some time. Right, but you will if you come around like this. But really, you have to get your tool wrist in the right position. Now, just need to do that um, turn a little bit better. Right, that's it. And I'm going to just give it another clean up pass. Yep, that's it, I'm happy with that. Right, and there's number two. Work down. Right, and again, as you see, we've got no torn grain water. I'm only rough turning this, but we've got, you know, it don't matter if it's you're just doing it as a rough, as a first turn, still try and get as good a finish as you can. It just makes things easier later on. Right, and being this a bowl, I haven't got to worry about a flat here. This is a bowl. It doesn't, if it's spindle work, it's different, you know, end grain. But this is bolted, that does not have to be a flat shoulder there. I can come round on that. As long as I can get hold of that, that's all there is to it. Right, I'm going to do this one now. Right, excuse me for a second, I just want to take my mask off. I just need to blow my nose because oh. oh must have had a bit of dust go up your yeah. nose. Got some, oh look at all these shavings, look, they're over <laughs> every oh a clean up job to be done. I'm not doing it. Oh shavings everywhere guys. <laughs> right, okay, number three. Right, let's just tip. Yep, that is tight. Okay, so we're going to come in. Right, this one I'm going to do with a 15mm round carbide chisel, okay? I'm going to put this bowl gouge back. So we've mixed it up, we've done a spindle gouge, a bowl gouge, and we're going to do a carbide. 15mm round, just the one out of the large type 3 chisel set. Step to the side. Let's spin up, again, come in, exactly the same. Close it, come in, kick it up. Spin it, exact, all three have done exactly the same. <laughs> this one, I'm probably a bit high actually. Didn't know this one had a chip because it a bit flew off. Exactly why I say, yeah, look, oh, there, oh, look, two bits come off because that was already cracked. That now, if you've been standing here, yeah. that would have hit you in the face. Yeah. So that's what I say, try and turn from this side. 
you really don't want to be doing this and being here like this. It's going to come at you. You can just get used to holding the chisel in your left hand. I'm there. I'm going to do this same from this way because I know it's got that bit of stick out. Yeah, it's alright. I think it's off the front edge. Right, so, I've got it round. So now it's round, I'm quite happy to stand in front of it, okay? But, as you notice, I'm doing it exactly the same. I could just come in and do this with it, okay? I'm below centre actually there. I could come in and just be doing this with it, straight in like this. But again, like I said, this is bolt orientation because it's square. If I come in with something flat, that would have actually probably made that even worse. Mm. And I could have lost most of it. But if you come in, put your chisel on the side like that. It can't do nothing, it can't cut. But, well, it can catch it, but it's not going to cut. Come in, rotate it, pick up the cut and then come round, okay? That's the same as I'm doing, look. I'm presenting that exactly the same as the bowl gals. Right, now I've got to put a foot on the bottom of it. Which ain't as easy with a 15mm carbide. But, it can be done. Right, there we go, there's my foot. Now I'm going to come round. So I've got my foot, like that. Bit of a smaller bowl, this one. Right, okay, we're all round, but I'm not I've got to finish cut that. I've got to drop the rest down a bit, because this is carbide, it's got to be done slightly different to the other ones. Right, okay, so we come round here and we come across. There we go, got a few little bits on that edge there. That's where that bit broke off, we'll see that in a minute. Got a little bump there. Right, there we go, it's done. Just rough turn. Right, oh, I've got a couple of flats there. Oh no, it's where it chipped out, look. That's right, that'll make that a shorter bowl. And it's got a little bit of a chipping on the bottom, but that's foot's coming off afterwards anyway. Mm -hmm. So that'll just be a shallower bowl. But, again, look. We've got no torn grain on it. That's where the bit chipped off, look. There. But I'll bring that, I'll bring that down when I turn it, when I hollow it. Okay, but I just want to see whether they're going to crack anymore. Right, so that's those done. Now we're going to get a chuck on and we can follow them. <laughs> and we'll just quick, very quickly hollow all three. Like I said, we're not finishing them, just a rough, rough turning. I've said it hundreds of times, fantastic bit of kit that. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Right now, I think all my tenons should, apart from that one, that one won't. Yep, they're all going to fit, they're going to fit this chuck. Right, ah, uh, here we are, that chuck Right, this is the first one I've done. Done this with a spindle gouge. Yep. There we go. So you don't have to worry about a flat and all that sort of stuff, that's not going to go anywhere. You put the little light on so that it makes it a bit brighter. You need the light, do you? Um, yeah, just help it, I think, to make it brighter when you're doing the following. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Right. So. See as we was doing this with a spindle gouge, I'll do a little bit with a spindle gouge on it. 
but I won't stay with that because I'm only rough do doing it anyway, but just to show you, you can hollow quite safely with a spindle gouge. Okay, so again, just come in with your bevel. you've got two ways you can approach because you can always come in from this side okay and you can come in here there you go right so you can come in you can come in that way if you want or you can come in this way with a spindle gouge I like to come in from this side Put your bevel on there, right? Just come slightly round, open your flute, and get your cut. Like I say, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same hollowing, it's just I'm, I'm coming from a, this angle and then working my way around rather than coming from this angle and then coming round. It's just different ways you want to do it. Right, where was I? Right, okay. We'll get the sides done. we do that a bit then come back. If you're taking too much right there, I just come off, put the cut up there, take a bit of that away, come back and pick that up again. Come back, pick it up again. Right, there we go. Now, oh, I'll just take a little bit. Oh, nice. I'll take one more pass actually. Right, that's that one done. And that's half inch spindle gouge for that, okay? That's been done with a half inch spindle gouge. Just for people that think you can't can't do it with a spindle gouge, you can. <laughs> right, there we go. And again, now I've not gone to its maximum thinness at the bottom because, like I said, I will come back and turn that again. I mean, it shouldn't move as in warp um, because it is dry, but it's the cracking. I want to stop it from cracking because they've been this wood's been cracking a nightmare. But again. No torn grain, okay? That's all done with a spindle gouge. Half inch spindle gouge. Right. Oh, this one might be a bit small on this chuck. Yeah, my chuck's... Yeah, look, it's going to turn. My chuck's fully closed, so I'm going to have to put my other jaws on. Two seconds. I ain't worried about cir perfect circles or anything. Yeah, oh, is it going to hold it? Oh, look at that. 
Oh, it's a fraction. Ow. Hang on. Well, there's a wheel. There's a way. They are. That's an in-between holding. <laughs> an in-between in size, that. It's not quite for this jaws, and it's not quite for that one. But, never mind, we've done it. Right, okay. This one, we'll just use a, a bowl gel. Yeah, starting right on center, okay. This is just a three oaks bowl gouge. I could do that. The one I started with is this one. It's a bit big. I mean, I could use this one, but I don't need one as big as that. Not in a small pot like this. It's a bit overkill. Right, let's start her up. Yeah, she's holding all right. And again, I'm doing the same. I'm coming, I'm on the bevel, rotating, going in. Now you can do it, you could come this way if you want, pick up the cut. With a bowl gouge, it'll probably work a little bit better that way. Then with the bowl gouge, I'll probably get a bit better cut that way. But you can come in and do it this way if you want. But that doesn't pick the cut up as well. Now the spindle gouge works better that way. Bowl gouge. Oh, that's a lovely finish. Bowl gouge, better to come in this way. Close the flute. Just press on it. Rotate it. And there we go. high. Remember, all cuts go to the middle. They don't come from the middle out. Start back up. I forgot this bit. Mm -hmm. Done. Okay, and that's one done with a bowl gouge. Chucky, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Right, let go. Right, so there we go, and again, nice and clean. Oh, sorry, nice and clean. No torn grain, okay. And I'm just leaving that at that and see how that finishes up. Okay. Right, last one. This is the one we've done with the carbide. Yeah. Now it's quite a, quite a small pot. It's got those chips on there, so I'm gonna have to take them off. There's gonna be a little shallow pot, this one. And again, I'm going to just go back to the fifth. Oh, I've lost it. That's oh, over here. Oh. <laughs> just got to use the 15 mil round chisel again, okay? Uh, I'm slightly high. Again, if you always get your cutter so you cut finish on centre. You can work above, you can work below. 
but you want to really be able to finish on centre like that. Right, start up. I'll stand over here for a second. Right, I'll come on there. Just using it flat at the moment, so I'm only rough turning it. You can use them flat if you want. But you will find your cut will dull more. Okay? So what I find better is just roll it like that and come up here. Just using it rolled over makes it last longer. And of course you'll get a better finish. But we're just doing this, I'm just doing this fairly quickly, so What I will do is do it like this. Oh, a little sawdust in there. And leave enough room to do a finished cut. And I've got to take it down because remember I've got that flat on there, and I? Now, we're going to have a quick look because I reckon I can take a, a bit more off the outside thickness and that'll get rid of that because I'm going to come down to there yeah right I think but I'll leave that otherwise it's going to end up too shallow so I'm just going to hollow out now at this uh, I'm not going to go a lot thinner here because I want to be able to come around the outside of it again right and all I'm going to do is push in Quick and simple following. I'm a little bit hard. Right, and then so we get up. There we go, right. Now, because it's quite shallow, it's quite big, I can't really get a push cut on it because I'll be, it just won't. But the beauty with a carbide is you can get that full cut and it's sheer, more sheer scrapes and sheer cuts as it comes out. Most important thing is dropping that handle. Right, got a little bit there. Okay, right now what I want to do is come around this outside bit again. Just to see if I can take that down. Right, now because I'm getting a little bit of bouncing on the bar, 
what I'm going to do to get a, a nice finish is I'm going to use the, the detail chisel. That's it, that gives me a better finish, see? that round and then I can take that off the front edge. Right there we go, that's that one done. Yep, I've got that off oh very very tiny little 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 bit. But that come out on the second turn. So that come out on the second turn, that one. But again, the thing to see there is that I've got a tiny little bit of grain tear there, but I haven't done a finished cut. I will use an AU cutter to get a complete finish on that. But again, there you go. So a nice little, uh, three little turns, three little rough turns there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, three little size bowls they are, look, mummy, daddy and baby, <laughs> like, love three bears. <laughs> For the three bears they are, okay. <laughs> are you Goldilocks? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Goldilocks, yeah, in disguise. <laughs> right, that was just a quick one for today, guys, just to show that, you know, the various methods that you can use if you want to do roughing down. You don't have to be using bowl gouge, you don't have to be using spindle gouge, you don't have to be using carbide. You can use either, you can use all three if you want, you can use whatever. But there you saw that pretty much no difference in the way I present the tools, I just present them all the same. So we've got, um, like I say, spindle gouge, bowl gouge, and then carbide, okay? And we've ended up with a little nest of bowls all to be uh finished off on another day and then they'll all just go lady put them on the stall and she'll sell them and there you go hopefully they're not going to crack now mm. and see where that goes uh i've got some more co up uh, <coughs> spit it out i've got some more cowboy hats to turn because uh she actually took i had i had eight cowboy hats that i turned over the time um and she, they all sold. She put them out on the store and they all sold. Within literally an hour of, of putting them out, they were gone. It's because they're so unique, isn't it? To, to, yeah, but the, they went to, it's five different people. <laughs> one bought two, another one bought two, one bought one, and someone else bought that. So, yeah, and they, they went. They just sold straight because it's a novelty. You don't see much yeah. here. It's all America, isn't it, cowboy hats? But I have got my one to turn out of the wood from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So Chitty Chitty Bang Bang goes Wild West. So look out for that one. That'll be coming up. We can make I'll, a bow up. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, see, <laughs> I'll see you on the next one, guys. Toodle pip. Bye, guys. <laughs>